looking for positivity or looking for encouragement encouragement to me a prince and aims to educate you to give you the push to believe to have the mindset yeah. for success mindset for You are watching Mindset for Success Show, and I'm Tamia Brinson, your host. And our guest today is Overseer Gregory James, and he is the pastor of Life Church International Center in Tallahassee, Florida. And we also have Mike Scott, and he is a mentor and community advocate in Orlando, Florida. Okay. Let's get right into this other segment, the second segment. And this is where we talk about how can we get our community to having a mindset for success. And I want to start with you, Pastor James, because I saw on your your um your social media again, I follow you too. So let me just quote what you shared with your audience. Um, you stated that we must formally activate the capacity of the church through formal partnerships with government and law enforcement. And can you elaborate on that? Because I know you've been speaking about the church being involved in the community, but can you elaborate? What does it look like to have a ch churches partnering with government and then law enforcement as well? Well, I mean, what it looks like, it looks like the change that needs to happen. I mean, the Bible says it like this, pray that the kingdom come and his will be done. And when Jesus was here, he said the government was upon his shoulder. So I feel like we as the body of Christ must take an active role in providing the leadership that is needed in the government. I mean, at the end of the day, the Bible makes it clear that when uh, when 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 the uh, when when those that are not uh, in line are in office, there is total chaos. But when the righteous rule, there is peace. So the, the so the church has an active role to be engaged in policy, engaged in creating opportunities. Uh, with law enforcement, bridging those gaps. And a lot of people, you know, in my area uh, see the involvement that I have. And sometimes they feel like, well, you shouldn't be involved in that. And I say, why not? Because if there are going to be policies that put in place, then I want to be at the table with a, with a voice to help make sure that it's in line with what we believe as a body. So we have a responsibility to be actively activated in government in every form of it whether it's as city whether it's state whether it's national um and i and i'm grateful for being able to be engaged um once again i got to go back to my lived experience it, it was my lived experience that put me at the table uh when um uh 45 was in office to be able to talk about the first step act it was my lived experience that gave me insight to be able to share with those who were trying to figure out ways in which to deal with men who had life sentences for a small amount of drugs. It was my life experience that was able to, to bring me to a place to be able to give insight on what the policy should look like. So, so we've got to be engaged if we're going to see uh, the salt and the light make a difference in our communities and 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 government and law enforcement are two areas that our community try to stay away from but i think that as a leader in the body of christ i think we've got to get to the table all right so mike let me go to you because you let me can you explain it well just tell the audience what you do because when i realize again i follow you so i know what you do um you advocate on behalf of your mentors, your mentee, yeah, your mentors. I'm sorry, is it mentees or mentors? I'm sorry, I'm having brain fog today. <laughs> it's both of them. I'm sure he's okay. advocating for both. 
<laughs> yeah, but he, uh, he actually worked with court cases and he go in and work with their attorneys and work with the prosecution. Let me, uh, Mike, you have the floor. Tell the audience what you do because I'm, I follow you and I'm like, what? Did that just happen? Okay. Uh, so I, I started as a, a mentor for the public defender's office in 2004. Um, and I knew what mentoring was, but didn't understand the scope and what I was kind of falling into. Because to be candid, I want to, you know, join the military and go into law enforcement uh, coming up. But so I started becoming a mentor and it became so much more than that. I became a case manager of sorts and, and really spoke to uh, programmatic aspects of what we would do for a youth or a family if the court decided that they weren't going to incarcerate them. Um, in 2009, myself and um, all of my friends who are mentors and also or consequently also veterans uh, started a nonprofit called Helping All Youth Achieve. And basically we, 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 we knock down barriers. Um, when you talk about someone not succeeding in any area in life, nine times out of 10, there's some type of barrier, even something as simple as uh, let's say you're a supervisor and your employees come in late to work, whereas they're normally there on time. It may be situations where the car broke down, but if you don't ask the questions, you don't know. And so when I go to court, um, normally it's usually in pretrial conferences and, and meetings outside of the courtroom to kind of speak to mitigation. Hey, if we, you know, go with probation, they've accomplished this particular goal. They got their GED, they got a job, they got a promotion to a job. And if you allow them to remain in society, you know, you have a team of individuals who are going to work with them. So I kind of advocate for them on the uh, legal aspect, because think about it, if you get into a crime, mom dad girlfriend boyfriend they're going to come to court oh he's this he's that or whatever but that that isn't a neutral party that can speak to you know what they've done and what they're likely to do they're just speaking based on their their personal relationship and while that has significant weight uh a court has to make decisions on you know uh things that are not related to familiar relationships and kind of look specifically to what is their likelihood to reoffend again and, and, are, and are they a danger to the community and so i speak to that um and, and things that will let the court know you can't guarantee anything, but let the court know that, hey, if you do rule in this particular direction, you have some safeguards and some resources that will make sure that this particular um, individual is not likely to reoffend and more likely to be a successful and contributing community, contributing member of a community as opposed to a danger to it. Wow. Wonderful. Wow. 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 So that's awesome because I, I wanted you to say that because I wanted you to let people know what you're doing and to give hope and faith and, and actually motivate some people out there to get more involved. If you know someone who have cases, uh, maybe you can call up the attorney and have, you know, a sidebar with them and work with them on that particular individual, get them in programs, you know, just advocate for them like what you do. So like, I, like my last court case uh, last month, I got two um, two cases I'm working with now, um, pretty high profile cases uh, for some folks. And like I went to court and I get to the courtroom. And so it's it's co-defendants. And in, in this instance, both of them are friends. So when you are represented by a local public defender's office, they can't in turn represent, you know, who your co-defendant is because even though you have that particular attorney, the entire resources of that office is to make sure that their client um, is well served and do what's in the best interest. You can't do that if you have co-defendants. So you have conflict counsel, who is a list of basically private attorneys that sign up with the court and they do the overflow cases or cases that the public defender's office in any county in Florida can't represent. So in this instance, I get the court I'm going to represent one on the PD case. And then my other mentees there gives me last minute notice that he had court. So he had court in the same day. So I'm outside with the PD, the prosecutor and the conflict counsel. And we're talking about, you know, indiv you know individual marriage for each uh, kid or not kid. I mean, they're young adults at this point, but just talking about, hey, this is what legal's asking me for. This is what their attorney's asking me for. What can you tell me about this individual? How likely are they to reoffend? Those type of questions. And I remember the prosecutor from another case like three years ago. Like I remember her, but I remember which case. I was like, I know you. And she's like, oh, from this case. I was like, oh, okay. So we started talking. And just that relationship with the prosecutor lended right. credibility for me. So when I spoke about, you know, their likelihood to reoffend or not, you know, it carried weight because I had, you know, just presented in front of her in a case years 
ago. So um, just talking about that so that when we go in front of the judge, prosecution and defense have already discussed kind of how they want to proceed. Um, the victim of the crime is, you know, happy of sorts because any any decisions that the prosecutor decides to make, they're going to let the victim know, are you OK with this first? And so all parties are served. Justice is served. You know, the the victim gets, you know, whatever um, resolution, whether it's restitution or whatever, they're happy. They walk away whole. And then the person who committed the crime, you know, made a mistake for one reason or another, uh, gets punished or learns from their actions, but also has the ability to recover. I think that a lot of times when you punish individuals, you forget they need to recover. If wow. you go with no resources, um, you can't live here, you can't work here, you can't do this, you can't do that, then you're more likely to reoffend. We want a society where everyone is contributing. And so if you don't have measures, people and systems in place to help those who make mistakes, then are we how great of a country are we if we can't help the least of us, particularly those that make mistakes? So that's kind of where I come in. That's where, you know, me and my fellow mentors come in. Like I said, we're all military veterans. We're all volunteer nonprofits. So no one draws a salary. Uh, if you do get something, hey, you spend some gas money or whatever, you get reimbursed that, you know. But, you know, we're, we're a small nonprofit um, just focusing on young people and young adults and their families and just helping them through some of the most tragic times. We've even had to pay for funerals. I've, I've written probably 20 or 30 obituaries because mom or dad didn't know where to start or, you know, we paid for, you know, paying for the programs, just, just being there in the time of need, you got to help people. Everybody's going to go through something. Right. Everybody's going to struggle. Everybody's going to make poor decisions or whatever, but sometimes we get in positions of success. <coughs> we forget. I made a mistake before I, I might've stole some candy out the store. I didn't, you know, I wasn't always here. Right. So right. Kind of putting yourself okay. in position, using those lived experiences and saying, Hey, I'm not perfect. And instead of beating someone over the head when they make a mistake, Hey, listen, these are the consequences, but let me coach you through so that you can be a better person. Like that's me. I didn't mean to get into my preaching mode. My bad. I come from that's a family okay. of pastors. So I have to learn to talk <laughs> in snippets because I'll get long winded and, and, and go on a tangent. But, hey, uh, yeah, that, that, wow, wow. I mean, you know, Tima, if you don't mind, I just like to say, Mike, and to all of your uh, mentors who are working with these individuals, man, you were making my heart feel so overwhelmed with joy because to hear you being that person that's there between the PD's office, the state attorney, and the family and the friends. Man, that's what I'm do what I've been doing day in and day out. As a matter of fact, I'm working with a situation now. Just started last week where a young man is in jail based on a violation, based on what people said. And now they're trying to send him back to prison. And I'm like, you know, you send him back to prison, what you gonna do? You're gonna set him up for failure. I mean, at least he's never had an infraction in almost three years and the hearsay from people now has caused his violation to be in place and being investigated. And now it's possible that you want to send him to prison. So I've been dealing with, you know, state attorneys all the following week and got a meeting set on Monday to advocate, even though there's a lawyer there. Wow. One of the things that I know, and Mike, I'm sure you know this as well, uh, all they see is a folder and the paper that's inside of it. They don't see the individual. And so, and like you said, this volunteer, we're doing this volunteer, we don't get paid for this. We do it because we understand the value of it. So, man, I'm just, I can't wait to get off so I can get your information because you mm -hmm. gave me one word today that I probably will make the highlight of my conversation on Monday. If you send him back to prison, how he's going to recover? And if he okay. don't recover, it's a possibility that he'll be rearrested. So let's not try to go down there. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tima. I'm I'm happy. I mean, I can I can be relieved from the show because Mike just gave me the answer I need come Monday morning. The word is recover. Yeah. How he's gonna okay. recover? recover. Ooh, that's the whole <laughs> message actually, right there. He actually said it like I I didn't think of it until he just pointed out. Like basically, what he's saying is like you know, lawyers they speak to the law, they speak to the case. Um, but they don't speak to the person. Right. And, 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 and parents, wives, family, family does that, but you're so emotional on, 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 you know, you may lose, you know, someone you love for five years. So you can't, you can't articulate the things that you want to say. And so, you know, being an advocate in court, it helps kind of channel, um, 
who that person is in a way that the court can understand. Uh, and sometimes it requires writing that depending on the judge. And so doing that, because sometimes, you know, that's my son. That's my baby. I love him. He a good yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. You. But that, that, that ain't that's doing not, no good. That ain't going to do. You got, you, got, you got to come a little bit better than yeah. that. You got to be able to talk about some things. So that's that's kind of how we advocate in court. All right. All right. Wonderful. So you, the audience, you guys who are listening and watching, I hope you are motivated by this to get involved um, in your community, in your neighborhood. And right now, let me just move on to um, law enforcement and the community, because uh, Mike Orlando always had like the national night out. You know, you have the officials and then you have law enforcement come out with the, you know, meet the community and have just have that personal relationship with them. But I like this new um, police department and I'm, I'm not advocating for no one. I'm not on either side. This is just to me. I'm always in the middle. OK, <laughs> but I like this new department because um, they're stepping it up in terms of their outreach. And again, I follow them. I follow their page as well. And of course, I love this new media. They're doing like a series of media campaigns. So that's what I like, of course. You know, and it, but I like to have I like to see them have, you know, more visibility in the local um, media, for example, the local networks and, you know, on radio, also TV, cable and not just only social media, I, although they are reaching a, a large audience. I think they got like ninety seven thousand uh, followers on social media. Uh, so that's a good, you know, following right now. And they're getting the word out. But I just want to play this clip and um, have the audience know um, what community involving with the law enforcement, what that looks like, because I really think, you know, it's still some things that they need to improve on, not saying they're perfect. But I just want to show this clip of the efforts that they're doing, because a lot of time we do give a lot of cri criticism, but we don't show the positive. So we need to let them know, hey, I like this. Keep doing this. OK. Let's, so let's watch this and I want your thoughts on the other side. Hi guys, I'm Officer Victoria Scott with the West Patrol Division and on Saturday, July 31st at 5 p.m. We'll be out at the library off of West Raleigh Street to hand out these nice backpacks to you all. Hey guys, I'm Officer Kerr of the West Patrol Division. We partnered with the Stars of West Orange and First Baptist of Orlando to make sure that you guys start the school year off right. This is a first come, first serve basis. It will be a drive through style event. Come on out and see us. We look forward to meeting you all. Look forward to meeting you all. <laughs> All right, so that is just one clip. I mean, if you go on Orlando Police Department uh, Facebook page, you'll see a lot of other campaigns that they do, but that's just an example of how they're reaching out. I love it personally, but let me just get um, a view from either uh, both of you, Mike, in your opinion, since you're here in Orlando, um, how's the Orlando the Police Department doing um, in terms of community outreach i think i think they're doing the best they can given the climate you know law enforcement has a, a difficult task to uh, obviously protect and serve the community but also uh you know be a part of that community and it's a delicate balance um it's not there's no one right formula that fits every uh, law enforcement agency across the country i think it has to be customized based on the community you're serving and that could change from street to street and that particular clip that you um played uh, officer uh, Brandon Kerr, um, he used to work for Okoye Police, uh, and that was an officer unit led. That wasn't like something from the top down, that was from the bottom up. And so that's the type of community policing you want to see. Um, officer Kerr, I met him um, on a, a crime scene like over the summer. And so we exchanged numbers and started talking about different things or whatever, and he reached out. Um, saying, hey, you know, can you promote this? We're trying to do this. And so, like, like, like you said, you were inspired by that. And the reason why you're thinking it's coming from OPD at the top. No, that was something that the officers in their squad did. That wasn't something that said, hey, we're going to engage the community. That was officers coming up with an idea saying, hey, we want to do this. And that was their first time ever doing it. So that was a particular squad on the west side of Orlando coming together to, excuse me, coming together to give out book bags. And I only give out book bags. They had Xbox games, PlayStation games, books. And a few other things I can't remember, but they had a whole table set up in front of the library on, on Raleigh Street. 
And so, you know, it, it's it's moments like that where you have the officers pushing <clears throat> as opposed to it being like a marketing campaign. It becomes more genuine, more more real, and and just uh, it's 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 better received. I mean, you didn't know all the details and look, and I seen you smiling when you saw it because what you saw was something that was genuine. It wasn't a marketing campaign. It wasn't a a top down thing. It was something that was really organic by the officers who work in a community and really want to be engaged in a part of that community. And and, and that's how. That's what community policing is, knowing people's right. names, having those relationships, not and not being afraid of them. So if they, you know, pull out a cell phone, you're not more likely to shoot them because, you know, hey, I know so and so I know his mom. I know his dad. We have to play ball together and stuff like that. Just building those relationships is huge to improving the police and community relations. Yes, I mean, I really was inspired. And that's the reason why I wanted to play this clip. So that whoever is watching, if you don't see this happening in your city, maybe you can send that to them and say, hey, this is an idea. And I would like to see this in my community. Uh, Overseer James, let me go to you. Now, I'm not picking on your city. But, it's okay. I, <laughs> but I did go to Tallahassee Police Department uh, Facebook page and, and it's it's some action, you, you know, <laughs> uh, they're, they're trying, uh, but I see at least they have a community listening session coming up. So, but that's about it that I saw. So in your opinion, um, let us know what, how, what's going on with Tallahassee. How do you feel in your opinion? Um, how's the police department doing in terms of community outreach? Well, I think that where we are now, because we were in transitioning from a to a new chief, uh, our, our new chief has taken on the role and responsibility of uh, leading our police department and their major tasks that he's facing. I mean, one, we see how much crime is going on, but our, overall, our police department is engaging. They're engaging more into the community. They're doing more things to bridge the gap between community and law enforcement. And that's major. I mean, when it comes to the community, what I just saw from Orlando is some of the things that we do here. And it's so vital because why? We want the community to know that not only are we there to protect and to serve, but we're there as humans who are able to do acts of kindness and be genuine in doing it. So one of the things that our community, uh, our police, our law enforcement is doing is that they're doing certain uh, outdoor events in different areas, which we call promise zones. These are zones where there are high crimes. I mean, the community, the, our law enforcement is out there on um, with local leaders doing, you know, the normal giveaways, uh, meet and greets, hot dogs, snow cones, where people can actually interact and engage. So, so we're doing some things uh, on a smaller scale, uh, but I think our biggest challenge now is trying to combat, you know, some of the violence that we're facing. But we are uh, making a difference. We just had a listening session this week that's led by one of our pastors. So, we, oh, we, you we, had it already. Yeah, okay. we had it uh, Thursday. And one of the pastors uh, led that, and we're just, we're just trying to hey make the community uh, more engaged with law enforcement because we all come to the grips of knowing that the community feel and believe hey we don't trust law enforcement, so we got to pick that trust there. So we are engaging. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So at this time, uh, we're gonna wrap it up. We almost to our time. So before we go, though, I want each one of you, I'm going to give you space to make any kind of announcement or, you know, any kind of projects you're working on just to put that out there. And uh, we're going to start with you, uh, Mike. Is there anything else you want to say or announce today? Uh, nothing I want to really say or announce, uh, but, but I don't do anything special. I just help the people that I know and, and, and those in it. And I think that if, if we... If you're looking for the change, it has to start with you. I mean, you heard the saying, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. I mean, I think that's 100 percent true for us to have a better community. It starts with, with us working in our own communities and then, you know, pulling our friends, family and resources to support whatever endeavors that are positive in, in our, our own neighborhoods. And I think if more people start to do that, 
you'll see a lot more positive engagement um, in, in the communities and not so much uh, friction or fighting because you're from here and I'm from there. So if you're if you're watching this and you're trying to determine, you know, what can you do as a person to make things better for for those in your community and, and, th and those around your community, um, start small. You know, I, I took what's 11 o'clock now. Um, I have a mentee text me this morning. Um, text me my first and the last name, and he said, um, I'll read the text to you. He, um, good morning, Mike Scott. And I was like, oh, here you go. It's early in the morning. What's up? I'm thinking something happened. He goes, I'm going to be giving out bag lunches today to the homeless. Also, my probation officer may give you a call. Just a heads up. Uh, just wanted to let you know I'm doing something uh, good in case you want to come out and support. I was like, okay, I'll try to stop by. So, you know, something small like that, you know, he, I don't know how much he's going to give or whatever. You know, he's not doing it for probation. He's just letting me know his probation officer. She probably told her something and she's going to check and verify. But, you know, on a Saturday, he wants to give out stuff and he's a rapper. So, uh, you know, little things like that. Be the change that you want to see in your community and, and you'll see the results. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. And like I said, I love the energy here today. I love that we we're coming up with solutions and we're coming up with motivations. Hopefully this will motivate people out there to get more involved and to do it at an individual level. And then once we do that, us as a community, then we'll come up together. OK. And right now we're going to go to you um, over to your James. Anything you want to announce or anything, any projects you got going on? Well, nothing uh, right now. We are, you know, closing in on, you know, last quarter of the year. And one of the things that we're in the process of doing is gathering a making a major call for men. It's a call to action so that uh, before the end of the year, we're going to be doing a men at night summit, men at night. And that night time is going to be midnight. And the reason being is because at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and chains were loosen in those who were in bondage. So I talked with some pastors and we'll be announcing that soon where we're going to be having men at midnight. Uh, and we're going to, it's going to be our men at midnight summit. It's going to happen before the end of the year, but I'll be announcing it and keeping everybody posted because we got to get our men back in their rightful place. And if we get them back in their rightful place, then we can see things shift. So once again, just thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for the opportunity to hear your insight. And I encourage you to keep doing what you're doing to make a difference. And uh, let's make sure we connect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Keep sharing that lived experience, man. Can't nobody tell the story better than someone who lived it themselves. Okay. I know that's right. Okay, well, guys, thank you. I thank you for coming on the show. You guys are an asset to the community and also to the body of Christ. And I just really thank both of you for your service because, again, I follow both of you and I see how both of you are very effective and busy in your community. And again, I thank you for your service. All okay. right, this is Mindset for Success show, and be sure to tune in next week, same time, Saturdays at not. I'm sorry, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Facebook Live and also YouTube Live, and then also this will re-air on Kingdom Purpose TV. We're on Monday nights at 9 p.m. If you have Roku, if you have Apple TV or Fire Stick, be sure to tune in, pull up Kingdom Purpose TV, Monday nights at 9 p.m. You guys be blessed.